Sue Moroni. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. That was the sound of the National Party MPs struggling to find five minutes' worth of good things to say about their own government. We just heard it um, from Melissa Lee and from Scott Simpson before her, uh, running out of things to say. And New Zealanders listening to those debate speeches must be scratching their heads and wondering whether they're living in the same country, because the rose-tinted approach from the national government just doesn't bear out in reality. The reality of everyday New Zealanders' lives and what they are struggling with. According to Scott Simpson, the country's in great shape because the National Party caucus all went and spent their Christmas holidays at the Coromandel. That's the best thing he could come up with, with how his government is apparently um, somehow relevant to ordinary New Zealanders' lives. So I think that was very disappointing to hear those two contributions. Mr Speaker, I missed the Prime Minister's statement. I wasn't in the House the day that he um, set out his vision for the country for the coming year. However, it would appear that I didn't miss much at all because the government is completely distracted. Instead of actually focusing on the vision for that brighter future they once used to talk about for this country, has anyone noticed I've stopped saying that? I've noticed they stopped saying that. In fact, they've even stopped saying they were on the cusp of something big. They were saying that just before the election, and they've stopped saying that all of a sudden. But instead of addressing those issues, they are now distracted. They are completely distracted onto issues like their Sky City shambles. <coughs> they are distracted trying to dodge the Mike Saban bullet. And they're distracted with their plans to sell off state housing. And none of those things are going very well for them at all. Let's just consider the Sky City shambles. The Prime Minister said he promised 3,500 seating convention centre, world class for New Zealand. That's what he said. He said it today at question time. Done deal by the national government. Well, that done deal turns out to be nothing like 3,500 people sitting in a convention centre coming from overseas. It's not going to be the iconic convention centre that the Prime Minister once uh, gloated about. In fact, again, Thank just you. like we don't hear them talking about the brighter future much anymore, just like we don't hear them tell, talking about being on the cusp of something big anymore, we're not going to hear about an iconic convention centre from that government much anymore. And yet Sky City had done fabulously well out of it. This done deal, the deal done by the national government, is actually very, very good for Sky City because they got three and a half thousand people, people worth of gambling concessions. Gambling concessions that will actually cause New Zealanders harm. So that's very good for Sky City, but it's not good for ordinary New Zealanders. And what about the Mike Saban bullet? Well, they're not doing very well at dodging that one either. Because I don't know how those ministers feel, but every time I see Anne Tolley and Michael Woodhouse on TV desperately trying to hide what they knew about the Mike Saban affair, it makes me cringe. And I'm sure, Mr Speaker, that ordinary New Zealanders watching that performance on the news night in and night out are cringing as well because they know, they know that those ministers are avoiding telling New Zealanders what they knew and when they knew it. And what New Zealanders are asking is why? Why won't they just come clean and say, I knew this on such and such a date? Mike Saban's left Parliament. What is the point? and continuing to hide this information. And the answer has to be that they are trying to protect the Prime Minister. That can be the only answer, but it's not looking very good for them. The sale off of state houses, well, in Hamilton, it looks like that's going to be a double whammy because we've just had our city council sell off a couple of hundred pensioner housing flats. And now what we've learned is that in the Waikato, probably somewhere between two and 800 state houses are going to be sold off in, in the years to come, in the few years ahead. Of course, the government won't tell us how many it is. They seem to be hiding that information as well, because they are ashamed that they are going down exactly the same pathway the national government has always gone down, 
selling off, flogging off state housing, even though in cities like Hamilton we face increasing homelessness. Meanwhile, the self-constructed story that the, that the government's constructed about itself, about them being good economic managers, is disintegrating before their very eyes. We heard earlier from Chris Hipkins, and he's absolutely right, that when Labor left, left office, there was zero net crown debt. That means we didn't owe money. It was a huge thing that the Labor government did. It took nine years of being absolutely focused on ensuring that we paid off our debts as a country. Then the global financial crisis came along. The government changed around about the same time. Treasury predicted that by the end of 2013, the country would be in debt to the tune of about $13.13 billion. And yes, that sounds like a lot of money. But what's happened? It's ballooned under that government to $60 billion. Six zero. $60 billion of debt that's been accumulated by that government. And that is not good economic management under anyone's set of rules, under anyone's set of rules. So if they believe that they're good economic managers, then they're operating on a completely different set of rules to what ordinary New Zealanders would understand as being good economic management. But then today at Question Time, we also learned that they are so bad at managing the economy, they are so bad at managing the government's books, that the only way that they will get within cooey of having the surplus they have been promising year after year after year is to dip into the pockets of ordinary working New Zealanders and business owners to overinflate the levies they are charging on ACC. That's right, Mr Speaker. That's the grand plan. They don't intend to get to surplus by growing the economy, by growing jobs, by creating more opportunity. Their only plan for getting to surplus is to rot the ACC levies so that workers are paying more every week through their ACC levies, and so are business owners. And today the question was put to Bill English, and he wouldn't answer it, that that rot, their inability to bring about economic growth, their inability to address these issues is going to cost households $60 more a year and businesses $1,500 more a year. That's what's propping up Bill English's surplus. And yet, even though they've got their hands in the pockets of workers and business owners through their ACC levies, guess what? Treasury says they still won't get there even though they've got their hands in the pockets of workers and business owners, Treasury says they're still not going to make surplus, they're going to crash and burn, and they're going to come in $500 million under. So what is the plan, Mr English? You've already put your hands in the pockets of workers and business owners. You're not going to be able to milk them anymore. What is the plan? Because I can tell them that in, in the Waikato, that plan isn't going too well. Dairy payouts are down. Jobs are going every week still on the Waikato. While dairy payouts were at their highest, at their highest level ever, we had 300 jobs going from Ruakura, the local um, research facility. We had hundreds of jobs going from New Zealand Post. We had hundreds of jobs going from the Huntley Mines. We had jobs going from Genesis Energy. We've got jobs still to go from our, our local hospital um, kitchen as that government contracts out their jobs. All of these are jobs that have gone on the Waikato because of decisions made by that government. At a time when dairy payouts were at their very highest, we can only shudder to think what's going to happen to the Waikato economy with those dairy prices plummeting as they have done uh, last year and early into this year as well. So, Mr Speaker, the rosy picture presented opposite is not a picture that is the reality for ordinary New Zealanders. They know that they're not being told the truth by the government, and they are looking forward to the straight-talking, honest approach of Andrew Little and the Labor team, because that's what people have been telling me.
by saying, what a breath of fresh air. We've got the Prime Minister going round and round in circles and not being able to say a straight answer, and we've got the straight-talking Andrew Little telling it how it is. Speaker. The Honourable Anne Tolley. Mr Speaker, I move that 